I was born and raised in Colombia. My grandma used to live really close to the airport, so I always saw the airplanes take off and land, and I was always in love with the airplanes. But I never really told anyone because I thought it was only for, for men. As years went by, coming to the United States, we had a layover in, in Miami, and I saw a female pilot, and that's when I said to myself, if, if she did it, I'm gonna do it too. And then when I was going to high school, there was a program called uh, the Mile High Flight Program. They chose the most outstanding students, and I was one of them. And after I solo, I, was, I said to myself, yeah, this is what I wanna keep doing for the rest of my life. I'm not sure if I wanted the job as much as I wanted to go to school when I was getting out of high school, and we didn't have the money to go to college and I had a cousin who attended the Naval Academy in Annapolis and he said maybe you should try the Air Force Academy. You could go to college for free and that sounded really good to me so I did apply to other places but so I was in the class of 1984 at the Air Force Academy and then you have to stay in for five years after you graduate and I thought I'll do five years and get out and now it's 35 years later, so, so here I am. At first, I was just curious to what plumbing was like. I um, worked at Chipotle first, and they would make me clean their toilets, and when they were clogged, I had to clean them and fix them. And So after that, I decided making $9 an hour wasn't quite what cleaning out toilets should get so I went looking around and I knew an electrician and that electrician gave me my boss's number so I set up an interview and told him I was worth it and in that interview I said let me prove it to you and he let me work for a day and then decided to hire me. Wanted to get into the medical field of some sort. I had gone to college and was in the financial field prior to this. Um, so I took some medical classes, um, never really thought that the fire service was something that I could or was an opportunity for me. Um, I met a female firefighter, she's a female lieutenant right now, and she just really inspired me and, and you know, once I met her I was like this is something that I really wanted to do. Uh, currently we have roughly about 450 firefighters for CSFD, so just Colorado Springs firefighters. Um, and right now we only have 18 female firefighters. So there are not a lot of females in the city of Colorado Springs. We don't see too many women in this field, you know, so like we always tell, we always find excuses, you know, for not to do something. So uh, when you don't see women, you know, just like I did when I was a little girl, uh, we just say, oh no, there is no way we can do it. When I came to the United States, I didn't speak any English. So, you know, it's just like any other career. When you study something, it's like a different language, right? So I had to study English and then I had to study aviation as well, you know, going through uh, my phase two program. So I had been in the United States for only a year when I was selected, so I was I was having a hard time, I wasn't having a hard time, I was learning English, you know. But in reality, you know, when we have a goal, when we set something for ourselves, we are as capable as men are, you know, we have all the same skills, you know. It might take us a little bit longer, uh, men or women, you know, uh, but as, as if we work hard through it, then we can get where we want to be. People doubt a woman can do this. They especially when you're coming into their house on a service call, um, especially if it's a man. Men doubt women because it is true. Men are stronger than us, but that's only strength. That's not mentally. They're actually mentally weaker than us, I think. But, you know, I wanted to prove to everybody, men, women, whoever, I can do it and that they could still do it. I don't know if it was more challenging for me because I'm a woman, um, if it was just hard at first because it's hard for everybody at first, 
I know a lot of the guys tell me the first six months when they started, it was hard on them. So I felt that it was only normal to be holding both my shoulders at night, being wrapped in them up in ace bandages is, and crying in my pillow like I'm in so much pain from jackhammering, digging, just doing all the heavy lifting and moving as much as I was really is exhausting on your body. I had people bet that I couldn't make it and now look they're not even here. When I first arrived at the academy as a captain they said oh well we have a lot of women here. Everybody thought I was a nurse. They said well if you're in the military and you're a woman you must be a nurse and and they would say well let's ask that nurse and I said I'm not a nurse. I remember when I was pregnant and you have to wear a different uniform and you have this um, badge that you have to wear as a permanent professor. But I didn't know where it went on the uniform when you're pregnant and they said, oh, don't worry because nobody else has been pregnant so they won't even know where it goes. <laughs> or I was the first woman vice dean. Uh, so, so I arrived in 2004 and I was only the third woman to be a department head. In 2004, it's still a male-dominated Air Force. Because of my gender, I have felt that I had to prove myself at some point, especially physically, because some things are, you know, weigh 60, 70 pounds, plus I have 70 pounds of gear on me, and so I think I have had to prove myself, but I always like to say I think firefighters in general all feel that way because we are, we are all tested. This is a job of training and testing. You know, the sky is the limit. Anything that you set in your mind, you can do it. You just have to tell your mind, you have to tell yourself, you have to believe in yourself that you can accomplish anything that you want. You just need dedication, perseverance, uh, and hard work. The biggest obstacle you're gonna find in life, it's yourself, because we put so many obstacles, so many fears in front of us, and we always find all kinds of excuses to not get to our goal, you know, but, so as long as you overcome yourself and you tell yourself that you can do it, then you're gonna get where you wanna be. You really have to go out and think about opportunities and it doesn't just fall on your feet. The more you can speak up and let people know what you wanna do, whatever you see, uh, you, there are ways to make it possible. And my daughter's 13 now and I'm having conversations with her about what she should do and I say dream big and dreaming big comes with risks. You have to challenge yourself. You don't have to put your dreams behind because a man says you can't do it or it's not a woman's job. You want it bad enough, you're gonna get it. You wanna go get it, get it, but you gotta do everything and or more to get it.